Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and this is the Game Week 4 video for the 5% series. The point of this series is to help people who want to do all right in their mini leagues, whether it's for work or family or just a bunch of friends, whatever. So following this system, you're not going to win the whole thing, but you'll do all right. You hopefully finish in the top 5%, which means if there's 10 or 20 people in your league, you could well finish in the top three. You may even win it. Now, the way it works this year, the way I'm doing it, is I'm only considering popular players. And there's a reason for that. And that is it's the popular players you don't have that are going to hurt you. So I'm going to quickly try and explain why ownership is important. And then we get on looking at what we think of the players for game week four. To illustrate this example of why ownership is important are the players you don't have. I'm going to pretend for this example, last game week three, that you had Ruben Diaz and he scored zero points. He did play, but he got an own goal and therefore obviously letting a goal ended up with nothing. Now, supposing there were three defenders that you didn't own, Luca Dean, Robinson and Saliba. Dean got seven, Robinson got four points and Saliba got two points. Which of these hurt you the most? Well, if we consider Luca Dean first, if 100% of managers owned him, but not you, they all got seven points that you didn't get, which is the same as you getting minus seven points relative to their position. But 100% of other managers didn't own him. Only 2.9% of managers owned him in the game in game week three. So that works out as, he, although he got seven points, that's like you getting minus 0.203 points. Robinson got four points which is obviously fewer, but he's 14.4% owned. So that's like you getting minus 0.576 points. Saliba only got two points, but he was massively 39.9% owned. So he's actually minus 0.798 points against you. So for these three defenders, if you don't have any of these defenders, then last week Saliba, who only got two points, hurt your rank a lot more than Luca Dean, for example, who got seven points. The ownership of the players you have doesn't matter at all. If you've got a player who's 1% owned or 100% owned and got six points, it's worth six points, doesn't matter. What matters is the ownership of the players that you don't own. So if you're trying to decide between two or three players and in your mind you think they're going to get similar points over the next few weeks, absolutely go for the higher owned players. Because if you get it wrong, that's the player that's going to hurt you the most. That's my logic anyway. Hopefully that made sense. And now we're going to look at the scores for game week three of the players in the system and what I think of them for game week four. There was only one clean sheet in game week three and that was for Liverpool. Starting with the goalkeepers, we had Becker, got eight points. Apart from that, Henderson, four. The other keepers didn't get anything. For their expensive defenders, Trent got six, Virgil van Dijk, five. The rest got nothing. For the cheaper defenders, Robinson, four. The rest nothing. For the expensive midfielders, we had Salah on 17, Saka 6, Palmer 6, Sun 3, the rest nothing. For the mid price midfielders, Eze 10, Bowen 5, Jota 3, the rest nothing. For the cheapest midfielders, they got nothing, basically. For the expensive forwards, Haaland 17, Isaac 9, Havertz 8, Watkins 5. For the cheaper forwards, Wood 9, Pedro 8, and that's all. So that's what they got in game week three. This is my thoughts for game week four. Looking at the goalkeepers, Raya is a good player. I'm saying he's good soon. So this week he's away to Spurs, but Arsenal have got Rice, who's a defensive midfielder, suspended. So that means the chance of them conceding goals has gone up slightly. Also, it looks like Odegaard's going to be out injured for a few weeks, which means their attacking potential has gone down a little bit, which means, again, they're going to be slightly easier to score against. We may be talking margins here, but it all counts. If you have Raya, he's brilliant. Absolutely keep him. If you're wildcarding this week, it's absolutely fine to get Raya in. He's very good. And in a couple of game weeks time, he could then get a whole string of clean sheets. It's not worth doing a keeper transfer this week to get in Raya though, unless you're wildcarding. Becker is a good player and he's a good player now. Home to Forest, home to Bournemouth. Very good um, games coming up. If you've got Raya, absolutely don't swap him for Becker, even though they're the same price. That'd be my recommendation. 
The only reason you might want to do that is if you think Rare is going to go down in value. You could hop onto Becker, but it effectively costs you a transfer. And then in two weeks, hop back. Rare has gone down to 5.4. You've saved 0.1 million. That's probably not worth the effective eight points of the transfer, though. Apart from that, Martinez got a couple of easy fixtures. He's all right. Pickford. So Everton are woeful at the moment regarding defence. They're letting in a lot of goals. But Branthwaite, who's a defender, is expected to be back maybe at the end of this month or beginning of next month. So if you've got Pickford, it's fine to keep him. If you're wildcarding, probably best not to get Pickford. But Pickford and Everton should come good in a few weeks' time. Henderson's all right. He's popular. Ariola. He got injured, went off at half time, but he may be playing this weekend. Fleckened, all right. Ward, that could be any four million bench fodder keeper who's not going to play. So you either go for Raya or Becker, reasonable chance of a good sheet. Martinez, less likely, but still could. Pickford, you can keep. Or if you start looking at four and a half million keepers, you'll sometimes get a clean sheet, maybe between seven and ten during the season. Now, some content creators get a couple of playing goalkeepers and keep switching them around. Personally, I don't like doing that. I'd rather have a keeper, and that's the keeper I'm playing, and there's somebody on the bench. But it is valid to switch it. It's just for myself. I find it's too easy to not get the points when I do that, i.e. I pick the wrong keeper. For the expensive defenders, Trent's very good. Nice fixtures coming up. He's got some good attacking potential. He's a good player. So for the Arsenal defenders, they are all good players. If you've got them, they're absolutely fine to keep. They're fine to play. If you've not got them, there's no need to rush and bring them in until maybe game week six when their fixtures turn. If you're wildcarding, it's okay to get one or two in if you wanted to. Gvardiol looks like he may start to be a bit more attacking. As far as we know, he's nailed for minutes, which is good, which means if Man City get a clean sheet, he should be getting the six points. It'd be interesting to see, is he going to start attacking or not? If you've got him, he's fine to hold. There's no need to get him in though, but he's all right. Virgil van Dijk's good. Not as much attacking return as Trent. Trent could score in any goal, gets lots of chances. Virgil van Dijk really only gets a chance when he goes up for a corner. Now, of course, Liverpool are going to get corners most games, but Virgil van Dijk's going to get marked by the defenders. So it has to be a corner and he has to have the opportunity and so there's several things that have to go in his favour. But during the season, he's going to get four or five goals probably. But he's all right. He also gets clean sheets. Saliba's a good player. Gabriel's a good player. So I'm taking Trippier out of the system. There's no reason to think Newcastle are going to start keeping clean sheets. Trippier's not getting the consistent minutes. It may be in a few weeks' time Trippier becomes popular and he's worth talking about again. But for now, we can ignore him. If you've got Trippier, I'm suggesting you get rid of him. Pedro Porro, now he's at home to Arsenal this week. You'd expect him to concede a goal, so not get a clean sheet. But with Arsenal being defensively slightly worse this week, now is a very good time to be playing them. So if you've got Pedro Porro, I think he's absolutely worth having. If I was wildcarding this week, and I'm not because I've already squandered it, but if I was, I'd almost certainly be getting Pedro Porro in. So Lewis is new to the system. He's getting quite popular now, so he's worth talking about. If he keeps playing, he's excellent. For 4.7 million, getting in the Man City defence, he's a brilliant player. There is, however, some doubt about is he going to be playing all the games, most of the games, half the games? We don't know that yet. So if you get him, you can be confident getting him as long as you've got at least some other defenders on your bench who would come in and get two points if he doesn't play. But he's worth having, basically. If you want to do Trippier to Lewis, that's a perfectly good move. So Robinson, 4.6. Nice and attacking. Next two fixtures are OK. He's only 4.6. He's all right to bring in, but if you could only bring in one of these now, I would probably gamble on Lewis. As for me personally, I have both of them, so it doesn't actually matter. Konza, so he got a knock midweek. We don't know at time recording whether or not he's playing at the weekend. I personally wouldn't bring him in, but he is popular. He could well get a clean sheet. Home to Everton, home to Wolves. Newcastle aren't yet defensively great, but Byrne does seem to be playing. He's all right, four and a half million. So Anderson started off at Palace in this season. He's now at Fulham. It's not worth having him. If you've got him, he's fine to sell. The reason I've put him risky is 
if you want a Fulham defender, you may as well go Robinson because Robinson, assuming they both get they both remain fit and they both play, Robinson should outscore him by maybe 20, 30 points this season. So Mikalenko, Everton, not worth buying, but in a few weeks' time when Branthwaite's back, he's going to be pretty good. Well, face, he's just there. Uh, he's bench fodder, as is Howard Bellis. It's good to have these bench fodder options that play. So they sit on your bench, but supposing you had Lewis, well, Faz and Howard Bellis, and then Lewis didn't play, at least one of the other two are going to come on and probably get you one or two points. And they're nice and cheap, and sometimes you need money to spend elsewhere. For the expensive midfielders, Salah, very good player. A couple of nice fixtures coming up. He can score points in any game, so he's fine. Palmer, very good player, can score in any game. Saka, good player. Odegaard's injured, so his attacking return potentials may be reduced slightly, but it's still very good. He can still score points in any game, even next week away to Man City. He's a good player. So Son, Solanke's probably not back this weekend. We don't know for sure, though. We don't know exactly where Son's going to end up playing. He is a good player, but for 10 million, perhaps Saka's going to be better. Palmer's 0.6 more. Palmer's probably better. So if you've got Son, he's all right. If I was wild carding, I don't think I'd get him. If I had him, I'd be all right to play him. I'd also be all right to move him on. Foden, still ill. Hardly anyone owns him now. Absolutely worth selling if you got him. Just get somebody else in. Odegaard, he may be out for three weeks, maybe a bit longer. Three weeks is the current estimate, but his ownership's massively going down. If you've got him, you should sell him. Fernandez, 8.4. He's still a good player, still possibly the best player at Man United. Next two games are Southampton, Palace, then home to Spurs, who can't defend. Then away to Villa, going to be distracted with Europe. He's a perfectly good player to have. If you have Ferdinand, Fernandez, he's fine to keep. The mid price midfielders, Jago Jota, a couple of nice fixtures coming up. He's all right. He's a good player. He could well do well. He might not do anything. And Luis Diaz is in there because his popularity is growing. They're both 7.6 at time of recording. It's quite feasible in the next four weeks. One of those is going to get 12 points, one to get 30. We don't know which one's going to get the points. They may both get 20 points. Uh, both good players. I'd be comfortable owning either of these or even both of these. Bowen, not massively highly owned, but a good player. When West Ham get points, there's a good chance he's going to be getting some of the points. Absolutely fine to have Bowen. Gordon, so Newcastle haven't quite managed to get up to their normal levels. I wouldn't be buying Gordon now, but if I had him, I wouldn't be desperate to sell him. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't be buying him though, not on a wild card even, but he's an all right player. So we're introducing Embremo because he's gaining in popularity away to Man City this week, not great, away to Tottenham, chance returns there. But after that, Brentford have very nice fixtures. So if you're wild carding this week, it's worth thinking in bring, bringing Embremo in. If you had Foden or Odegaard, you may want to bring him in this week just in case he goes up more in value. There's always a risk he's going to get injured, of course. But Embremo, in, let's say, two weeks' time, is going to be highly owned. And if you don't have him, he could really punish your points and your rank. As a gone down 6.9, but he's a very good player. For the cheapest midfielders, Garnacho, OK, United have been rubbish. Garnacho's not been starting. Eventually he will be. He's one of their better players. He's only 6.4. I wouldn't go buying him now, but if you've got him, you don't have to be desperate to get rid of him. And Kunku is definitely worth getting rid of, and he's not worth buying. Smithrow, I wouldn't be buying him now, but if you've got him, he's absolutely fine. Certainly for the next couple of weeks after that, we can reassess. But he's still quite popular. So if you don't have Smithrow, and then he scores 10 points this week, which is feasible, that's going to hurt your rank a bit. Semenyo, not massively highly owned, but he is getting bought by a lot of managers. He is probably the player at Bournemouth that's going to be the main talisman and get the most points. So at only 5.6, he's absolutely worth having if you're trying to look for a cheaper midfielder. Rogers, very popular, 5.1 million. Seems to have a lot of potential. He's not quite fulfilled it yet. 
Onana is not in the system. I just mentioned him. Onana is a defensive midfielder. Rodgers is very attacking. But it looks like Onana might be going up for some of the set pieces when there's a corner, etc., which is where he's going to get his goals from, probably. The expectations are that Rodgers is going to outscore Onana. They're both 5.1. But Rodgers is more highly owned, which is why he's in the system. Winks is simply bench fodder. He plays, he can get you two points if he ever has to come off the bench. But if you want to save a bit of money, and remember, you've always got to have four players on your bench. It's worth having a playing player on your bench who doesn't cost you much money. Guarding the forwards, Haaland, brilliant, worth having. Watkins, he's not getting the minutes yet. He should be on paper a brilliant buy just now. Some beautiful fixtures coming up. But we don't know what his fitness levels are. We don't know for sure that he's playing this weekend. But he probably is. If you've got Watkins, I would suggest you absolutely keep him. He's definitely worth having. I probably wouldn't be bringing him in now on a wild card. I definitely wouldn't just be doing a straightforward transfer for him. Isaac's worth having. Still very highly owned. He's going to really hurt your rank if you don't have him. And he does well. So Havertz, he's going to be good soon. Again, because the players they're missing. Tottenham, Man City, he might get something in those games. But after that, from game week six, he's going to be very, very good. If you've got him, I highly recommend you keep hold of him. If you're wildcarding, you may want to get him. I wouldn't be doing a transfer to bring him in this week, though, if it's just a plain transfer. And Solanke, although he's injured, he should be back soon. And when he is in for 7.5 million, he's probably going to be a very good player. And I suspect a lot of managers will have him. For the cheaper forwards, Tony, he's now abroad. If you've got him, you sell him. Munez, although he's only got two points, I think, each week so far. A couple of home fixtures. Reasonable chance of getting a return. He's absolutely fine to hold. If I was wildcarding, I wouldn't bring him in. So I definitely wouldn't bring him in if I was just doing a transfer. But if you've got him, he's fine to have. Wood coming up to a couple of difficult fixtures. Away to Liverpool, away to Brighton. He's all right. I wouldn't be bringing him in, but you don't have to sell him. Gel Pedro, two very nice fixtures coming up. And he's nice and cheap, 5.7 million. So he's, if you're wildcarding, he's right to have. If I had Tony, I'd happily move to Gel Pedro even for a couple of weeks and then reassess the situation then. Gel Pedro is a good player. Welbeck's in here now because a lot of people are buying him. His popularity ownership is increasing. You could have Jao Pedro or Welbeck, both 5.7. Of course, there's a risk whichever one you get, the other one's going to get the points. There is an argument to have both of them if you want. The next two fixtures are potentially quite nice. And then, so Cannon's left the system now, but I've left him in here because he's 4.5 million and there's maybe another three, 4.5 million forwards. None of them are going to play anyway. So if you've got Cannon and you're comfortable having him, you can just leave him. He's not going to go down in value. And when you next wild card, then get rid of him. But I'll leave him in the system for now. He just represents a non-playing 4.5 million striker. So we're going to look at the bench order now. The way this works, I'm going to show you in reverse order what I think of the players for this week. So the first player you see that you've got, I suggest you put on your bench. But when it comes to the benching order, just do whatever you like. This is my suggestion. Same for the captaincy. You just do whatever you like. So Ward, not going to play. He's on your bench. Then it'd be Flecken, Pickford, Ariolo. We don't know who's playing. Henderson, Rea, Martinez and Becker. So the first goalkeeper you saw that I showed you is the one I suggest you put on your bench, assuming you're, you've only got players from this system. Regarding the other players, the first player you see that you've got, I suggest, is position three on your bench, the next one position two, and the last one position one. So Cannon, a four and a half million forward, he's position three on your bench. Then Harwood, Bellis, Anderson, off Fulham. Mikalenko, Weltface, Winks, Byrne, Wood, Nkunku, Mbuemo, Konza, Robinson, Semenyo, Solanke, Garnacho, Saliba, Gabriel White. I've dropped the Arsenal players down slightly. I'm not frightened of Tottenham, but without Rice, they are slightly worse. Virgil van Dijk, Gordon, Bowen, Welbeck, Pedro Porro, Rogers, Smithrow, Munez, Gvardiol, Lewis, Fernandez, Havertz, Sun, Watkins, Palmer, Trent, Diego Jota, and Luis Diaz. 
And there are six players I've not shown here that are in the system, and that's because they're the captaincy choices. So for captaincy this week, Haaland is an excellent choice, and that's almost certainly who I'll be captaining, but Salah is also an excellent choice. Either of these are fine to be captain. But other fine captain choices this week would be Eze, Isaac, Saka, Jao Pedro. No one should be surprised if any of these get 7, 10, 12, 15, 17 points. They're all good choices. So one of these is your captain and one is your vice captain is a good way to go. If you don't want to do that or you can't do that, any of the players that were green in the previous pages, they'd also be fine. Now, some managers are wildcarding this game week. Some are doing in game week six and there'll be a few that'll be leaving it late in the season. If you're wildcarding this game week, I thought I'd show you some potential teams with the various Haaland Teller combinations that you could do for 100 million based on the current prices just using the players in this system. So this first draft I'm showing you has Haaland but no Salah and this screenshot is taken from Fancy Football Hub. I'm not affiliated with them but you can sign up to them if you like. They're all right. I've been using them a few years but I do also use Fancy Football Scout. I'm signed up to both of them. So this squad is Henderson in goal with Trent, Virgil van Dijk, Pedro Porro at the back. In the middle we've got Eze, Diego Jota, Semenyo, Palmer, Rogers up front, Haaland, Gel Pedro. On the bench we have Flecken, Howard Bellis, Weltface and Solanke. In a few game weeks time of course Solanke is going to be very good. This is an all right team and Fantasy Football Hub gives it a team rating of just 87% and 68.1 points this week. It's all right, really. You don't want to worry too much really how these rate your team. I'm just showing you so you can see how they compare to each other. This is an example of a team that has neither Haaland nor Salah. We have Martinez in goal, Trent, Guardiola and Virgil at the back. In the middle, we have Eze, Saka, Jago, Jota, Palmer, Rogers up front, Isaac and Jao Pedro. On the bench, we have Henderson, Lewis, Byrne and Solanke. And that was given a team rating of 91%, 68.2 this week. This is a Salah draft, but with no Haaland. Martinez in goal. Trent, Cavadio, Virgil van Dijk. In the middle, we have Salah, Eze, Fernandez, Palmer and Rogers, Joe Pedro and Welbeck up front. Then on the bench, Ariola, Byrne, Mikolenko and Solanke. That got 93% team rating, 68.7. I'm reading the numbers out, but it's already quite meaningless. And then finally, this is Salah and Haaland. We have Martinez in goal. Trent, Guardiol, Gabriel, Salah, Eze, Diego, Jota, Rogers, then Haaland, Jao Pedro and Welbeck up front. And on the bench we have Henderson, Howard Bellis, Winks and Welkface. That got 95% and 72.7. But remember the thing to watch out for is you want to think which highly owned players don't I have because they're the ones that are going to hurt you. As for the background picture... Unfortunately, James L. Jones, the voice of Darth Vader, died this week. So I thought I'd show a picture of him looking at a galaxy far, far away wearing the old mule hat. So there we have it. A small explanation of why ownership matters for the players that you don't own. And then what my thoughts are for the popular players for game week four. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that was a little bit interesting. Have a good game week four. Bye. <laughs>